How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Sponge 5000 and in this video we're going to focus on the average range of temperatures you should see this winter in the United States as we're going to take a look at several different factors to determine if the range of temperatures should be warmer than average this winter in your specific location or slightly colder than average and the first pattern we're going to take a look at is the North Atlantic oscillation and based on what we're seeing right now with the forecast it seems most likely we're going to be primarily either in a neutral to negative phase for majority of the winter time frame of course this is still subject to changes so um when I'm forecasting a pattern that's months out it's definitely a lot more difficult to iron out how um if it'll actually be the case but it's um but for right now the most likely scenario is that we should be in for a negative north atlantic oscillation which means that the eastern half of the united states will likely experience colder than average conditions this winter and when taking a look at the pacific north american oscillation a very similar pattern where if um where it could either be warmer or colder than average along the east coast depending on which pattern takes place we see that we're in a positive pna pattern which promotes um colder than average conditions right up along the eastern half of the united states while um, we see warmer than average conditions right up along the west coast so based on this i could say that the east coast will see temperatures that are colder than what you'd expect um in the northeast expect temperatures closer to the 20s as your average temperature um between of course the daytime highs and the nighttime lows so it should be a fairly cold winter for a lot of you guys along the east coast so since we're going to be in a positive PNA pattern, you should expect warmer temperatures uh, um, right up along the western half, while colder temperatures along the eastern half thanks to a more prominent low pressure system that's located along the east coast to bring more of that northerly flow to bring down those temperatures and to bring the Arctic air further southward. The North American oscillation also shows a very similar forecast where during a negative phase, we see colder temperatures throughout the eastern half. Now, another big pattern we need to take a look at is a snow extent map throughout the northern hemisphere. And we do see there is some snowfall accumulation throughout majority of Canada, as well as some portions of the northern United States. It has been receding as temperatures have been warmer than average this week throughout the United States. However, we're still seeing the snow extent larger than normal um, for the North American um, region, where if we were to take a look at the chart departure from average, um, you're going to see that we're slightly in um, positive when it comes to the amount of snowfall accumulation in a, a large portion of southern Canada and even in the extreme northern portions of the United States. And what this tells me is that we're more likely um, in a pattern that's bringing colder than average conditions to the United States. And that likely will continue as we approach the um, heart of the winter. And what um, also a bigger snow extent means is that it's simply colder when there's more snow on the surface. Because instead of the short wave radiation from the sun being absorbed by the surface, which heats up faster than snow, um, it um, it's absorbed more so by the snow, which um, absorbs heat a lot more slowly which means that um it's simply colder when there's more snow on the surface and since we're already seeing more snow on the surface i'd expect that especially in the eastern half of the united states for temperatures to mainly be colder than average um so you definitely need to be prepared for your average temperature this winter to be lower so this is the average snowfall anomaly we see during El Nino years compared to the long-term average. And we see much more snowfall overall for the southern United States and even extending into the northeast. So temperatures should be hovering around 3 to 5 degrees below average for most of the winter right around the Rocky Mountain ranges. And you should expect something very similar right up along the northeast coast and even extending into the southeast where there should be more snowfall on the surface to allow those temperatures to remain as um, cooler than um, what you'd expect. 
Another big thing we need to take a look at is the drought monitor. And as you can see, there are several areas throughout the United States experiencing moderate to severe drought conditions, more specifically um, portions of the southeast right around Louisiana and Mississippi. And this extends into the Mississippi River Valley and into the Pacific Northwest as well. So uh, drought plays a big role in terms of the average chapters you see because the more severe uh, drought is, the uh, more likely it's going to be much warmer than average because there is less moisture on the surface and the surface heats up a lot faster than um, moisture and when there isn't moisture on the surface and that means that all that energy all that sun energy will get absorbed straight from the surface which means that temperatures will heat up a lot faster and your overall average daily temperature will be much warmer and um, in a lot of these areas, I expect the drought conditions to get worse, more specifically right around the Pacific Northwest. So I do believe that temperatures should hover around three to five degrees above normal. So that could be big when it comes to um, determining if you're going to experience snow or not in a lot of these areas where you're typically right up along the rain snow line. So that I think that will also lead to less snowfall, of course. And then for the Southeast, while you guys are currently in drought, I eventually do expect it to subside since we're in an El Nino and that simply brings a much more um, potent um, Pacific jet that brings a lot more storm systems right out over the southern United States. So although there's a drought right now, I don't expect this to last all winter. So while I do believe the beginning of the winter might be a little bit warmer than average thanks to this drought, I do believe that the Pacific jet stream will eventually win out and bring those colder than average temperatures you would would expect during an El Nino. Another big thing we need to take into consideration when it comes to the temperatures this winter is the computer models, more specifically the NMME climatology model, which pretty much combines all the most reliable American climatology models into one solution. And based on this solution, um, we do see that it's expecting that, um, te it's expecting temperatures to remain around average. Um, this winter for the months of December, January, and February for much of the eastern half, while slightly warmer than average for the western half. So this is very typical. Um, this is what you would expect um, from an El Nino pattern um, that's combined with a positive PNA pattern where it's warmer along the western side and cooler on the eastern side. However, I do expect the departure from average along the eastern side to be colder than what the NMME model is currently expecting thanks to a negative North Atlantic oscillation. So you should expect colder temperatures um, in this area. Now, probably the biggest data point we have when determining what um, the average temperature should be in your area in the United States is uh, temperature anomalies um, when comparing the strong to moderate El Ninos to the long term average between 1991 and 2020. And we clearly see most of the United States during moderate to strong um, El Ninos are cooler um, is cooler than average, especially um, the southeast, even extending into the Rocky Mountain ranges. I, uh, um, of course, the snow has a lot to do with that, the increased amount of snowfall accumulation. Um, and for the northern um, United States, it's a lot closer um, to average. Um, but for most of the United States, um, this is what you should expect um, when it comes to temperatures. Um, I don't believe that the western half of the United States will be as cold as what this climate division plot is stating thanks to the fact that we're likely going to be in a positive PNA pattern for quite some time during the winter um, time frame. So um, conditions should hover more so around average right up along the west coast. But for the eastern half, expect the temperatures to be colder. And overall, this is the um, climate division map that I based my forecasts off of comparing um, the strong to moderate El Ninos to the long term average. So this is straight up temp um, the temperatures um, you see during these years, not the temperature anomaly, just the actual temperature readings. And we do see a large portion of the United States um, would experience temperatures right around the 20s on average. This includes Chicago, Detroit, um, as well as um, the New York City metropolitan area. And keep in mind when I made this forecast, this is combining the 
um, daytime highs with the nighttime lows. This isn't the average daytime high temperatures you um, would see, um, um, you should see this winter. This is the average um, between the nighttime lows and um, the daytime highs. So um, don't expect like 60 degree temperatures as highs around Southern Florida. You definitely shouldn't expect temperatures that cold. Um, but when combining the average of nighttime and daytime, that's what you should expect right around the Southern Florida area. So here's my complete temperature forecast um, this winter. Um, so in the northern portion of Minnesota and North Dakota, you should expect temperatures on average hovering around the um, around the single digits between 10 to um, zero degrees on average, um, which isn't um, unusual for you guys. You do typically experience nighttime lows below zero and daytime highs that barely reach 20 or just below 20. So this isn't anything atypical for you guys. Um, however, I did put the area of 10 degrees a little bit smaller, a little bit further westward, thanks to the fact that I do expect this area are going to be slightly warmer than average so um over the eastern um half of montana where you should expect an average chapter of the teens usually now you should expect um average chapters right around the 20s thanks to the fact that it should be slightly warmer than average um and then um for the 10 degree range this includes cities like green bay as well as minneapolis which is around what you should expect during the winter time frame on average temperatures hovering around the teens um, between the daytime highs and the um, nighttime lows and then just south of that you should expect your average temperatures um, right around the 20s um, and for the northeast for actually a large portion of the northeast this is colder than what you'd expect um, because simply around new york city metropolitan area um, the average temperature hovers more so around the low 30s now i'm expecting the average temperature to hover more so around the upper to mid 20s right around 28 thanks to the fact that we're going to be in ne a negative north atlantic oscillation so definitely expect those nighttime lows to be um in the teens a lot of nights as well as daytime highs not even reaching 40 for the average would be around 20s um right around um the new york city metropolitan area um boston as well and just north of philadelphia this includes chicago as well which is typical for you guys cleveland um and even denver is involved with um with average chapters hovering more so around the 20s just south of that you should expect average chapters around the 30s in a lot of these areas in the southeast this is colder um than what you'd expect um in a lot of these areas are right around northern georgia alabama mississippi um, you would experience average temperatures in the winter hovering more so around the 40s. Now I'm expecting it to be around the 30s thanks to the fact that we're going to see a lot more jet stream dips so definitely be prepared for that. 40s just uh, south of it um, between daytime highs and nighttime lows. Um, Myrtle Beach is involved um, as well as Birmingham, Alabama extending into Jackson, Mississippi. Dallas should experience average temperatures hovering around the floor. 40s um san francisco as well and seattle and portland expect average temperatures around the 40s um just south of that you should expect average temperatures around the 50s um this includes um cities just north of daytona beach um new orleans should um see average temperatures around the 50s so as houston um phoenix and la and san diego are also involved in this and then just south of that where it should be the warmest among the uh, um amongst the lower 48 is florida and southern texas where average temperatures should hover around the 60s so this is my temperature forecast for the united states this winter if you want even more in detail forecasts regarding what type of temperatures you should expect in your area this winter um, whether it's going to be much warmer than average or colder than average just make sure to comment down below and i'll make sure to um do my best to give you guys a more in detail forecast regarding the temperatures you should see in your area so make sure to comment down below if you're interested but that's it for now guys and i thank you guys for watching